Upon his successful completion of Oleander's basic braining, Rasputin managed to catch the eye of the scientist, Sasha Nine. The German fellow invites Raz to his lab for advanced training. Initially, he was placed into the brain tumbler for psychoanalysis. However, Raz was stopped by a bright-eyed demon. Sasha pulls him out and offers to train him to deal with this nightmare. By being pulled into his mind, Raz was given an arena to practice. While Coach Oleander's mind was a war-torn landscape, Sasha's is radically different. His mind is a perfect cube, with a skyline portraying complex geometric patterns that reflect his analytical mind. After being trained on how to focus his emotions, the cadet is given the task of practicing this new Cyblus power on some sensors. These are natural aspects of a person's mind that travel throughout the psyche and stamp out unnatural mental processes. These sensors are unlimited, so they are the perfect source of target practice. However, Raz becomes impatient and dials up the sensor rate to unsafe levels. It is at this time that he learns just what lies under the surface of Sasha's mind. The control Sasha has over the perfect cube is shattered and areas based upon different memories erupt to the surface. There are four areas that give us a rough idea of what memories are trapped just under the face of the cubes in his mind. Two reflect his early years of life, showing a series of towers with spinning platforms that reflect mobile toys hung above a baby's cradle. The others show the cradle itself, with toy blocks littered around the mattress. The next has shoeboxes with his surname, Nine, printed on the sides, as well as measuring tape. The final region is a generator that shoots fire into the air. The level is structured so that Raz has to shut down the sensor valves and allow Sasha to reclaim control of his mind. This, however, causes a buildup of sensor energy and creates a mega sensor who attempts to stamp out both Raz and Sasha. After the battle, Agent 9 is able to reclaim full control of his mind and gives Raz the Cyblast Merit Badge. In Sasha's shooting gallery, the figments are less abstract than in Coach Oleander's psyche and serve to accent the areas of Sasha's mind. Let's go into each area and examine the figments unique to each. In the bedroom, the images are largely baby bottles, blocks, teddy bears, and other toys for infants. One even depicts a woman holding a baby rattle. Moving to the pillars area, most of the figments involve mobile toys that Sasha likely looked up at while lying in his crib. One even has a dog attached. The next time, the cube spits out images from when he worked as a cobbler in his dad's shop. The shoe box face of the cube includes figments that are tools of the trade, including thread, shoes, and even weird ones with cockroaches holding a hammer or shoe polish. By the time we reach the area that looks like an industrial generator, we get a peek into what is likely an even later time in his life. The figments of Sasha's imagination here reflect workers in a factory-like setting. One is holding a wrench while another is shoveling material that looks like coal. Another set shows workers having lunch or mechanical gears. The mental vaults found here give us a hint at why exactly Sasha's mindscape is focused on imagery from when he was an infant, as well as the shoes. Right on top of the large crib we find the first. Entitled Sasha's First Loss, it begins with his mother holding a baby rattle over his head as he reaches up for it. She is depicted as very loving and a maternal parent. Over time, she became ill and eventually succumbed to her sickness. Sasha's father lay over her deathbed, grieving the loss of his wife as the infant reaches out to them. After she is buried, his father was never the same. Rather than give Sasha the love and affection needed for a developing child who just lost his mother, his father became an empty shell, leaving the child to grow up without any form of comfort from a remaining parent. In the final slide, we see his father with a book on his lap. Too distracted to read it, he simply stares out the window while Sasha plays with the blocks in his crib, alone. The second vault, called Sasha's Second Sight, is found hiding on the bottom of the cube when the shoebox area is brought forward. While simpler, it shows another aspect of his psychology. His father was a cobbler, and Sasha was raised to follow the family business in repairing shoes. Throughout his young years, the boy would persistently ask about his mother. However, he never received an answer, being forced to keep his mind on his work. 
At some point in time, Sasha began developing his psychic powers and used clairvoyance to look into his father's memory of her. The first was of his mother holding him as a newborn. Happy that he was able to see her, he probed further. The second revealed that his father imagined her as an angel looking down over them. Smiling at this thought, Sasha kept going and was shown one more. However, this one ended up altering the direction of his life. He witnessed a memory of his parents in the middle of intercourse. While this would be shocking to anyone, it resulted in Sasha leaving home and setting out into the world on his own. Before addressing the meat of what this world represents, let's discuss one smaller aspect of Sasha's psychology. Say something hideous and horrible jumps out at you. Something so disgusting that it simply must die. Ah, oh, it's so tacky. I can't look directly at it, but I control those feelings. Focus them, concentrate, and release. And the world is a better place. Your turn. His aversion to tacky lamps may be perceived as a humorous character quirk by the player. However, it represents an unconscious trauma of his that presents as a complex. These are defined as a distorted thought and sensory pattern that has become deeply ingrained into a person's psyche. In the slide showing his mother's death, sitting next to the bed is a lamp that matches the ones he has an aversion towards. Due to the law of associative memory, Sasha unconsciously relates the image of these tacky lamps with the death of his mother. By destroying them, he removes the stimuli that unconsciously reminds him of this trauma. The mantra to keep in mind when exploring Sasha's mind can be distilled down to these two phrases, control and emotional balance. In his formative years, Sasha grew up without a mother to provide a warm, nurturing environment and with a father who was emotionally negligent. In the archetypal sense, the absence of the mother to counterbalance the father leads to a loss of childhood. Sasha was forced into the mindset of adulthood far too soon. This form of neglect can lead to emotional problems growing up and into adulthood. To quote from an article by Grant Brenner entitled, How Does Early Parental Death Affect Adult Relationships? Studies of adults with early parental loss show that they are more likely to experience depression, anxiety, and substance use disorders, and use maladaptive coping strategies. Within another article by Andrea Brandt called Four Ways That Childhood Trauma Impacts Adults, some of the effects she describes can be applied to Sasha 9. The one that was on full display in Sasha's second sight is the creation of a false self. As Sasha was emotionally neglected by his father, he adopted the persona of the cobbler. He did so in the hopes that the praise from his father would feed him the emotional attention he craved. The problem with this coping mechanism is that it is easy for your true self to become lost. Luckily for Sasha, he never lost himself fully. This persona was broken every time he asked his father about his mother. Eventually, though, he hit his breaking point when witnessing the sexual memory in his father's mind and left home. From here, a different coping mechanism began. To quote from Dr. Brandt's article, If you were neglected as a child or abandoned by your caretakers, you may have buried your anger and fear in the hopes that it would mean no one will be able to abandon or neglect you again. What happens when children do this, though, is that we end up abandoning ourselves. We hold ourselves back when we don't feel our feelings. Just by observing Sasha's outward demeanor, the word that comes to mind is monotone. When used as an adjective, it means unchanging in pitch without intonation or expressiveness. As reflected in his mind, which is all about control, Sasha buried his emotions to the point where it is difficult to express himself. This can be shown by his inability to voice the romantic feelings he has for Agent Vodello. During the time after leaving home, I imagine he mass-produced sensors within his mind. While this is speculation, I feel that he unconsciously convinced himself that his emotions are a foreign entity in his mind that must be removed and his sensors began to stamp them out. However, the Sasha we see when Raz arrives at Whispering Rock has corrected this extreme reaction. So what happened? While this is never discussed or confirmed in the game, I feel that the only clues we may have is on the generator face of the cube. This one implies Sasha went to work at some form of industrial plant after leaving home. When working in certain kinds of industrial plants, one thing the workers need to keep in mind is the relationship between temperature and pressure. 
the hotter a gas becomes, the greater the pressure within a container becomes. If the pressure becomes too high, it will find a weak spot in the container and burst out. This can be seen when aerosol cans are left in the car on a hot day and explode. In order to compensate for this, there is a pressure release valve on industrial machines to vent out the excess as needed to avoid the situation. If Sasha did indeed work at such a place, he learned the skill of finding balance with pressure and potentially applied this to his own psyche. The sensors in his mind are released from the little industrial valves as seen here. In his impatience to attain his merit badge, Raz opened the valve further and further until it bursts open, releasing an unstable amount of sensors. At this point, Sasha's mind goes into chaos, and Raz is tasked with shutting off the pressure release valves to stop the sensors. With the generator cube face containing the final valve, the flames bursting forth reflect this last bit of sensor energy releasing into his mind. However, after it is closed, the pressure continues to build inside of his mind. That once you lose control of your own mind, it's very hard to get it back. Yes, one's thoughts must be 100% controlled at all times. Well, no. Actually, if you try to completely suppress your undesirable feelings, they'll build and build and eventually explode. Oh, so, uh, what would happen if you were to, say, completely block off all your sensor outlets? Well, there would be a buildup of sensor energy within that would, uh... Eventually... Run, Rasputin. Very fast. In the attempt to repress this psychic energy inside a cube, just like the aerosol can, it will find a weak spot and burst forth violently. This parallels those who repress their emotions. While it does help us cope, eventually if we do not vent our feelings in a safe manner, that emotional pressure will build up and explode out of us violently. So what is the lesson we learned from all of this? The purpose of Rasputin entering this mind is to learn how to use Psyblast. But I've learned to keep it under strict control, and that's what I'm going to teach you. Control your feelings, your fears, your anger. You must learn to control them, focus them, concentrate them, and release them. As therapy? No, as firepower. Just like a factory worker has to maintain balance and control the heat versus pressure, Sasha teaches Raz to control his own emotions and vent them out in controlled bursts of psychic energy. Balance is the key. Emotions unchecked will possess us until we are slaves to them. Emotions repressed build up until they eventually explode from us. The merit badge earned during this lesson shows that Rasputin has learned the proper balance between these two extremes. Mentally prepared, he is ready to return to his own mind and confront the demon he witnessed there.